वेलकम ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन सो द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन एसोसिएटेड विद द ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इज इम्पिडेंस मैचिंग नाउ लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट द इम्पिडेंस मैचिंग बेसिकली इज इम्पिडेंस मैचिंग इज द डिजाइनिंग ऑफ द सोर्स एंड द लोड इम्पिडेंस इन ऑर्डर टू मिनिमाइज द सिग्नल रिफ्लेक्शन एंड टू मैक्सिमाइज द पावर ट्रांसफर सो it is basically the matching of the source impedance and the load impedance now let us understand this impedance matching by the help of transmission line figure so here is the transmission line now at the input the transmission line is characterized by the characteristic impedance that is denoted by z0 and at the output side of the transmission line a load impedance is connected over there so here is the load impedance that is being connected to the transmission line and this load impedance is being denoted with zl now to match the source and the load impedance we have to connect a stub at the distance l because the source and the load impedance are not matching yet so we need to connect a stub at this point and this point is p and this point is p dash so here is a stub that is used for matching this source and the load impedance and the distance between this point p and the load impedance is nothing but equals to l and the length of this stub is equals to l dash now after connecting this single stub for the matching of source and the load impedance the value of l and the l dash should be such that the source and the load impedance should be perfectly matched so we can write it the value of l and l s should be such that source impedance z not and the load impedance zl should be matched perfectly and the aim of connecting this single stub is nothing but impedance matching so single stub is connected to provide impedance matching so this is the main aim of connecting this single stub at the point p and p dash now the stub should be positioned at p and p dash in such a way that the input impedance sorry the input admittance will be equals to 1 plus jx so the input admittance is equals to 1 plus jx this is most important fact and we will use this in the upcoming derivation and the length of l dash of the stub should be chosen so that the admittance of the stub should become minus jx that's why the total admittance after adding 1 plus jx with minus jx will become one only so this is all about the impedance matching introduction part now let us derive the length of this l 
or the length or the distance at which this single stub should be placed so that the source and the load impedance should be perfectly matched. So in the further derivation we will derive this value of L. Now we know that the input impedance for the transmission line is given as Z input is equals to Z naught Z L plus J Z naught 10 beta L over Z naught plus J Z L 10 beta L in terms of normalized impedance we can write this input impedance as Z input equals to Z naught by dividing this numerator part and denominator part with Z naught we get ZL over Z naught plus J 10 beta L over 1 plus j zl over z naught 10 beta l since zl over z naught is nothing but normalized load impedance that is denoted by zl and this z in over z naught can also be written as normalized input impedance that is Z in over Z naught so let me write this expression in terms of normalized load impedance and normalized input impedance so normalized input impedance when this Z naught being converted into this denominator part it becomes normalized input impedance is equals to normalized load impedance plus j 10 beta l over 1 plus j normalized load impedance 10 of beta l so this is our normalized input impedance This is normalized input impedance Now let us have a look at the normalized input impedance when converted into admittance part Since we know that the input impedance is equal to the reciprocal of admittance or the input admittance so we can write this expression in terms of admittance as 1 over y in that is being equals to 1 over y l plus j tan beta l over 1 plus j 1 over y l tan of beta l now here is the imaginary part that is coming in the denominator so to remove this imaginary part we have to cross multiply it with the numerator and denominator part with negative symbol so multiplying this term with its conjugate we get 1 over y l plus j tan beta l over 1 plus j 1 over y l tan beta l multiplied with 
वन माइनस जे वन ओवर बाई एल टेन बीटा एल ओवर वन माइनस जे वन ओवर बाई एल टेन ऑफ बीटा एल नाउ ऑन मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस डिनोमिनेटर पार्ट एंड डिनोमिनेटर वी गेट द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द इनपुट इम्पोर्टेंस एज y input is equals to y l plus y l tan square beta l plus j tan beta l minus y l square tan beta l divided by here in the denominator this is a plus b and a minus b form so we can write it a square plus b square because here is the j omega j part so is j square will become minus and a square minus b square will become a square plus b square that's why 1 plus by l square tan square beta l now if we separate the real and the imaginary part then it become y n is equals to y l 1 plus tan square beta l over 1 plus y l square tan square beta l plus j tan beta l minus y l square tan beta l over 1 plus y l square tan square beta l so this is the input input admittance in terms of load admittance since in the introduction part of impedance matching we studied that the input admittance that is being denoted as by in should be equals to 1 plus jx now on comparing the real and the imaginary part with this 1 plus jx we get this real part will become equals to 1 so by l 1 plus tan square beta l over 1 plus by l square tan square beta l will be equals to 1 only on cross multiplying this with 1 we get y l 1 plus tan square beta l is equals to 1 plus y l square tan square beta l now on taking tan square as a common we get tan square beta l y l minus y l square equals to 1 minus y l on taking this term in the denominator the value of tan square beta l will become 1 minus y l over y l minus y l square on taking y l common from the denominator we get tan square beta l equals to 1 over y l let us give it as equation number 1 
सो टेन स्क्वायर बीटा एल इज इक्वल टू वन ओवर वाई एल डेट इज द रेसी प्रोकल ऑफ लोड एडमिटेंस सिंस द लोड एडमिटेंस इज नथिंग बट इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू लोड इम्पिडेंस सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ लोड इम्पिडेंस इट कैन बी रिटर्न एज टेन स्क्वायर बीटा एल इज इक्वल टू नॉर्मलाइज लोड इम्पिडेंस एंड इफ वी टेक अंडर रूट ऑन बोथ साइड्स दैन इट बिकम टेन बीटा एल इक्वल टू अंडर द रूट नॉर्मलाइज लोड इम्पिडेंस एंड इफ यू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस लेंथ डेट इज एल दैन इट बिकम एल इक्वल्स टू वन ओवर बीटा टेन इनवर्स ऑफ अंडर द रूट लोड इम्पिडेंस ऑन सिंप्लीफाइंग द लेंथ वी गेट सिंस दिस इज नॉर्मलाइज लोड इम्पिडेंस दैट इज इक्वल्स टू नॉर्मलाइज लोड इम्पिडेंस सो हियर इज द लोड इम्पिडेंस डेट इज डिनोटेड बाय जेड एल एंड इट इज बींग डिवाइडेड विथ जेड नॉट सो दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर नॉर्मलाइज लोड इम्पिडेंस एंड इफ वी रिप्लेस दिस नॉर्मलाइज लोड इम्पिडेंस विथ जेड एल ओवर जेड नॉट देन आवर लेंथ बिकम्स एल इक्वल्स टू वन ओवर बीटा टेन इनवर्स अंडर द रूट जेड एल ओवर जेड नॉट now this beta is nothing but equals to 2 pi by lambda since beta is equals to 2 pi by lambda on substituting this beta equals to 2 pi by lambda our length becomes l equals to lambda by 2 pi because it is 1 over beta and beta is equals to 2 pi by lambda that's why we write lambda over 2 pi here tan inverse of under the root zl over z not and this is the final expression for the length at which we can place our single step for providing the impedance matching between source and load impedance so this is the distance of stub or we can say that single stub so this is all about the impedance matching if you like my videos then do subscribe my channel and please hit the like button thank you